My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, year after year, we come here in this place to venerate St. Francis Xavier. Why are we visiting this place every year? Is it because it is the heritage place or it is a tourist place? For some, it, the answer may be yes. But most of us, the answer should be no. We come here in order to experience the spirituality of St. Francis Xavier. We come here to imitate his virtues, to learn from him. And as we are gathered here, we are preparing ourselves to that great feast of our going to Saib, that is on the third. And as we are preparing, we are called to follow Jesus like St. Francis de Sales. We are called to follow Jesus like St. Francis de Sales. So we are not coming here only to just see the place, but we are coming here to learn from this great saint. Even though being from somewhere else, from the, the native of some other country, he comes here, he came here and he proclaimed Christ. He proclaimed the values that God, that Jesus taught. So my dear brothers and sisters, today we are called to follow Christ like St. Francis Xavier by participating in our family relationship. And as we know, family is the basic unit of our personal life, basic unit of the society and of the church at large. Because it is in the family that we learn to communicate. It is their first word we say where it is in the family. It is in the family we learn what is good and what is bad. So it is in the family that we learn to love because it is from the family that we receive our first love, love from our parents. So it is in the family that we first learn about God, about Jesus, about Mother Mary. So we learn catechism in our family. So it is in the family that we learn to value ourselves and to value everything else and picking up our values, what is said and unsaid by our parents. So we observe, as a child, we observe from our parents. And as we grow, we learn what they say. So we grow in our family. Our family forms, forms us for many years. So my dear brothers and sisters, the future of the humanity depends on the family. If you are in the family, a family which is God-fearing, a family who, which is prayerful, then the future of the family will be good. The society will be good. The country will be good. And the world at large, it will be good. So there are a lot of attempts made in order to destroy the family in today's generation. A lot of attacks, a lot of unknown elements that are created in order to destroy the peace in the family. And it is not unknown to us. All of us sitting here today will say, yes, we experience certain, certain times this kind of elements where our family is disturbed. And there are ways and means people are trying to redefine the family. But they do not reflect God's plan for the family. So my dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today and let us ask ourselves, is our family fulfilling God's plan for our family? Am I living a family life which is based on the virtues of God? We desire our family to be the best family. We desire our family that the children may have a good future. So that is what we desire so many things. But our desire should start from God, our relationship with God. So it is important to reflect on how our family fulfills God's plan because family, we grow up in influence of us, influence 
us for the rest of our lives. Because as we grow in our family, it will influence us for the rest of our life. When families reflect God's plan, they are mighty. What is God's plan for your family now as we are reflecting on this? What is the plan of God? What did Jesus say about his family? And all of us have heard this passage when y'all were getting married. In Matthew chapter 19 verses 4 to 6, Jesus says, Have you not read that the Creator from the beginning made them male and female, and that he said, This is, what, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and becomes attached to his wife, and the two become one flesh. They are no longer two, therefore, but one flesh. So then, what God has united, human beings must not divide. So this is the words of Jesus. What man has united, human must not divide. But we are again going against the plan of God. There is again division taking place in the family, especially between husband and wife. And that is not the plan of God. Many are thinking it is very convenient to take divorce. There is no con compatibility between husband and wife, between the, the one who is married. So the family life is not, a, as Pope Francis says, it is not something which is dropped from heaven. We all of us make mistakes. We are not a perfect human being. We are imperfect and we are created in that family and have different sets of ideas and thinking. So we are not someone who is dropped from the heaven, but we are there to understand each other. So these are very clear words from Jesus on God's plan for the family. It is a man and woman who become one flesh and what God has united must not divide. So what else God wants us as a family? What is his plan? Again, in the letters to the Ephesians, we read the husbands are to love their wives as much as Christ loved the church. How much did Jesus love the church? And we all know he gave his life. That was the epitome of his love. So my dear brothers and sisters, that is how much the husbands had to love their wives according to the letter of Ephesians. So husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. The letter, of, letter goes on to say, husbands are to love their wives as much as they, are, they love their own bodies. So husbands and wives is your love for each other a reflection of the unselfish love of Christ for the church. So that part of the letter to the Ephesians is a beautiful description of God's plan for the family. It starts with husband and wife. Once the husband and wife are a person who are filled with God's presence, or a person who are filled with God's Holy Spirit, or are the person whose life is full of prayer, then it reflects in their family as the family grows. So we read in the scripture very well that how we are to plan for the family, how we are to go about as a family, how we are to radiate the values of the gospel in the family. We are told clearly and we are reminded every year time and again. But are we following the teachings of Christ. And today's gospel, we hear about a centurion, a man of authority. Being a man of authority, he had faith in God. We have in a family a man of authority, be it a husband or sometimes it's a wife. A person of authority should always direct the family in the right direction. And that person should always be attached to Christ, should have faith in Christ. 
as it is a well known saying a family that prays together stays together but i would say a family that prays together grows together if the family does not pray together does not grow together they just fall apart so my dear brothers and sisters how is my family how is my prayer life as a family how is our prayer life in the family do i spend time coming together praying the rosary reading the gospels of the day are we spending time with the lord are we making an effort so that there is unity in the family are we making effort to inculcate the christian values to our children are we showing them what christ is all about are we teaching them are we making them to understand or are, are we just christian for the name's sake so today is an invitation for each one of you my dear brothers and sisters to learn from our saint francis xavier he followed christ to the full we are called to follow christ to the full if we want if you want peace in your family if you want serenity in your family if you want mutual understanding in the family then we need to kneel before christ every day there won't be family without difficulties there won't be family without problems there will no there won't be family where there is no misunderstanding yes all will be all of these will be present as i have said we are born in an imperfect family but the prayer that we do in our family will help us and strengthen us to understand each other because it, as we practice to pray every day the values will start forming in our life because in the readings in the scriptures the values are given and when we time and again read those values it tries it goes into our mind it goes into our hearts and it will be shown in our actions so my dear brothers and sisters let us today make a resolution that we as a family as we are born in a family let us grow as a child of god let us grow that we belong to christ that others may see yes this family belongs to christ this family radius christ value in the church this family is a family which is an example how to live a family life let us be that example in our society wherever we are living in our neighborhood so that others may learn from us how to live a good family life so let us build our family relationship and let us also pray for all those who are sick in the family especially the our grandparents those who are sick we are feeling them we are feeling that they are burden in our life at times no they are the one who have made you to grow what you are today now they are in their vulnerability they are in their weak moments this is a time where you can be the stronghold where you can be the pillar where you can be that leg for them who can walk with them so let us learn from our patrons in francis xavier and let us follow christ always and let us be a good christian who radiate christ's love in the family and in the society wherever we are let us pray for this grace during this eucharistic celebration amen